Hi, this is Rune here with another video, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Atlas skill tree. Yes, if you're a new player, the Atlas has its own skill tree, and it's actually one of the most well done things in Path of Exile. So, we're going to talk a little bit about generic strategy, what I do, my approach to SSF normally, and now that I'm Trade League, what my approach is going to be. So, if we go in game, we have the Atlas skill tree, and we get a point for every map bonus we complete. And you can just hover over here. So there's 115 from maps, 11 from the endgame Maven invitations, and 6 from Pinnacle Eldritch bosses. A bunch of points, a total of 132. And early on, they're a bit of a pain to respec, but late game, you do end up like stockpiling regrets and orb of unmaking and you can from curac buy orb of unmaking for regrets so even on ssf i end up having like two three hundred orb of unmaking and 500 orb of regrets by the end of the league and i do respect a pretty hefty amount it obviously depends on how much you play so first i want to talk a little bit about my normal approach to a league star and what i normally do early on and this is normally ssf oriented so early on and i like making my own gear i don't like buying it off other people i go for essences then I go up here and I grabbed Jun because getting unveils early is good. I'm experimenting with all hands right now. I'm going to remove that because I don't want to have it. But it was actually pretty good when you don't have any missions for farming Jun. So having covered stay out in all hands, really good early. I wish I'd learned it earlier. Then I go up here through Export Reconnaissance. This is very nice early. And then I go Commission Officer. I go up here on the right. And uh, I grab this essence node. Then I go down here and I grab this essence node. Now, normally I go over here, but this is so far away. Um, so I actually ditched that. But if you're really going to go hard on essence, I would travel over there. And that makes the essence map device thing super worth it. It's 2C and you get a bunch of essences in your map every time. And they're doubling and it's just your essence tab is filling up. And later when you have a bunch of points, I like combining that with harvest and you just swap nine stacks, like stacks of nine of uh, deafening essences around to what you need, like clothing, greed, zeal, red, whatever. So that's generally how I do that. Then after I've gotten all the essence stuff and whether you get the last note or not doesn't super matter, then I go for expedition. It wouldn't hurt to go shaping the world first because this is really nice for your map device. I didn't and I maybe regret it a little bit. Uh, then I go over here for expedition. I grab these nodes. Uh, I grab these nodes. And then I was heading over here for these nodes when I realized I'm on trade league. I don't need expedition right now. And I really dislike running it. If you like running it, I've heard the new expedition keystone node, which explode the entire thing. Now, this is good for builds that don't have any immunity. So, like Corrupting Blood, I don't think has any immunities. But if you're like Ignite, Poison Build, or Chaos Damage, Fire Damage, etc., it does suck. Now, another thing I really like picking up early, there are two things. This is maybe not necessarily worth it for trade, but I fucking love it. It makes my league so much more fun. Divination cards from strongboxes are duplicated and then guaranteed strongbox. And um, these do that you get diviners more often. And honestly, I love it. I find so many more diviners and it's so fun. And when you do get a good doubled card, which you don't get a lot of, it's so fun. Now, it's probably not a very optimal node, but... That's what is really, really great about the Atlas is pick what content you like and you're probably doing the right thing. Like if you like Blight, spec into Blight. If you like uh, Rogue Exiles, you can, honestly, these are really nice to have just for mapping, especially on softcore with both of these. They're a bit rippy on hardcore. But yeah, uh, Shrines is also like a fun, amazing thing that I love having. So these nodes and these nodes, they do that. Your Shrines last for like, is it a minute, a minute, 10 seconds, something like that. And uh, you get a lot more shrines in the maps, especially when you have these three travel nodes here. I don't grab the last one, but um, really, really good. And you get two shrines. So very often you will get an acceleration shrine. And uh, honestly, it makes my league just so much more enjoyable. Then I was experimenting with crop rotation. I absolutely recommend that you do not take this note. I found it terrible. Uh, it pretty much is only good when the... Um, is it this one? Yeah, when it doesn't wilt on two crops, and I never got a tier four beast with it. So normally what I do with harvest is I run in and I kill like the ones that are highlighted in blue, not the actual blue crops, just the, the monsters that are highlighted in blue. And if there's no tier four beasts, sometimes I just leave the crop entirely. So I'm mostly like using it to scout out tier four beasts to get more shoppies. But this one, you have to fight the entire harvest the entire time. It's very time inefficient. I did not like it. 
Right now, I have a bunch of Jun stuff because I wanted to get uh, the colors on my bow and I needed one white socket. And I was very lucky. And even though it had the potential to do six whites, at least it gave me the white in the right socket. Now, I have been experimenting with destructive play. This is really, really good. It is not particularly rippy as well. Uh, it is when you are fighting a map boss and it's witnessed one to three more. So you can have a total of four bosses are summoned. And these are affected by vivid memories, remnants of the past and conquered conquerors. Now, you will not get four witnessed at a time, so it's not like you can just, boom, get a full maven in, in three maps. You will have to do, well, not necessarily ten because of this, but you will have to do like eight to ten maps, but you get a lot of conqueror maps. So, really, really good. I actually ended up dying to the invitation itself because I'm stupid and I never learned my lesson on Chaos Resist. I have 12 now instead of minus 30. But, uh, yeah, I've been really enjoying it. It was super good. I will absolutely do it again. And they can also drop Awaken Gems. So not only are you getting more Cortexes and things like that, but you're getting a lot of those. Now, another cool boss strategy you could do, or rather advanced mapping strategy you can do, is Wandering Path. Now, the notables, like things like this, they won't work anymore. So you don't have a higher chance to drop the maps. But Destructive Play will spawn so many more map bosses. So I'm not sure which will be better, whether like having a normal atlas like this. Uh, but it's so easy to sustain... And uh, the way Sustain works with this is you search for connected map and you take every single one of these nodes and you take a bunch of map drops are duplicated. So when a map drop, even a special one drops, there's a very big chance that it duplicates and you're almost guaranteed one map back per map. So it's called a boss rush atlas. You just rush to the boss, kill things on the way, and then you leave. You don't clear like the entire map. Now, obviously, there, there needs to be done some testing on what's better between having these three and destructive play or just wandering path and destructive play but both should be really really interesting um the number one thing i wanted to say end the video with and, and say is that that atlas you have it's probably okay like octavian said on that tweet back in the day and that's just because everything is really balanced it's one of the most if not the most well-designed thing in path of exile because you're always feeling like you're missing out on something there's nothing i hate more in a video game when there's only one choice and you are stupid for not doing uh anything like specifically whereas if you want to do metamorph if you want to do delirium you want to do beyond ritual everything is really good and really balanced um so i've sort of set up just now for like blasting maps and not taking any like time intrusive mechanics like ritual but uh, yeah, this is what I like. And next up, I would probably maybe do some Eater. I'm not sure whether I just focus on Maven or if I do Eater. But we'll see. Um, very, very different for me being training. Just wanted to like air out my thoughts and hopefully that helps somebody. And maybe reassure them that the Atlas they have is actually good. Even without following a streamer's Atlas. You really don't need to. One thing I will say actually at the end. I really hate these. Even on Tradling, I think they're trash. Because... It's, it's a hard thing to explain. Hopefully it'll click for some people. But the reason I don't like them is, let's say I don't want to do Legion without having specced into it, right? So why don't, I, why don't I take this? Well, it would be one, two, three, four, five points. And we're so point starved, right? It's so extreme on points. Well, okay, Scizorin, you're right next to this one. What if you don't want to do Metamorph? Well, it's two points for me to block Metamorph. And it is just adding 2% to all the other content. Now, the thing is, if that content is there, and this is why I don't value it that much, if this content is there, it does take me time to do it. And if it's not there, it doesn't take me time to do it, right? And maps are infinite now. We have no problems with sustain. So, and some of the most rewarding things anyway is just running to the end bosses and, and killing them. So, and I, I hope I can explain this well enough, but because... I don't value that it's always there. I don't really mind if the difference is I have a 60% chance to spawn the mechanics I do care about or a 40% chance because they're spawning quite a lot anyway and they do take time to do, right? I'm hoping I can explain this well enough. So I don't want to waste, like maybe I want to do this. Well, I don't want Metamorph. Obviously, Metamorph is a bad example. It's so easy to skip no matter what. I don't want to do Delirium. I don't want to do Blight. I don't want to do Ritual. So I can spend one, two, three, four, five points here and I'm getting 8% chance more for the ones I do care about, like Harvest. Um, pretty much the only one I do care about actually is Harvest. So eight po 5 points for 8% more Harvest. No, I'm okay. I'll focus in the ones that are like, here's 15%, 5, 5, 5. Now I'm sure there are some strategies and, and maybe people like Rimmer will have like, well, there are cases here where it's actually worth it. 
I really don't like them. I never use them and there might be exceptions. And if it's working for you already, sure, don't fix it. I just wanted to like put my thoughts out on it on, maybe change someone's mind on them. And the other thing is, well, Zizern, well, what if Legion spawns or Ritual spawns and should I do them? No, I, I don't do any mechanic I've inspected into. I haven't done a single Ritual this league. I sometimes do a Ritual early to look for Offering of the Goddess. Uh, but now I'm Traily, so I just bought one. Uh, I don't do Legion. So if it's there, I just skip it. Like I focus on mechanics that I've specced into and I optimize the efficiency. I'm thinking about how much currency am I making per hour? Uh, not am I missing out on this mechanic? So yeah, hopefully that helps. Obviously there are always exceptions and yeah, if you're an experienced player and you, it's working for you, that's great. There's the end of my Atlas video. I hope it helps you. I hope you guys are having a great league start. Stop if you like the video, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.